Hi guys, welcome back to the big sew along. I am Ginny and today we are doing a sew along, an actual sew along for um, the T205 oversized shirt from the assembly line. Very excited about this. Um, this is the second time I've made this pattern. This time I have made it in a olive green um, cotton shirting with a print on it. I got this fabric from MarcyTilton.com probably two years ago. Um, this is exactly the same as the first shirt I made, except for I did shorten this one two inches, and I used the very fancy big collar, um, and that is from the expansion pack at the assembly line. It doesn't come with the regular shirt pattern, uh, but I do love it. I really love this collar. In fact, I want to use it on everything now. Um, this is kind of a long video, you guys. Uh, I think the actual tutorial part is about 40 minutes, which is way longer than I usually do. So um, I apologize for that. I really just didn't want to break it up into two separate videos. I was really hoping that some of you guys might have a little time off over the holidays to uh, make the shirt. So I wanted it to be available for you. Because it's so long, I have put time, time stamps below. So you can easily fast forward through anything you don't want to watch or fast forward to certain sections if you need to rewatch them. Um, I think that is it for now. Let's just get to the tutorial and then I'll come back and chat for another like second because we don't have extra time. <laughs> okay, we are going to start with our shirt fronts here. This is my right front and this is my left front. And the first thing we're gonna do is just press these um, button bands back. So you're gonna press this edge under 3 eighths of an inch, and then you're gonna press the whole thing over another, I believe it's, it's three centimeters, so I believe it's an inch and an eighth. And then we're gonna put some interfacing in here. <clears throat> now I like to put my interfacing on the public side, so that means I'm gonna put it on the shirt, not on this band. I also like for it to go over the crease a little bit because <clears throat> I think that gives you a crisper edge. So when you're done doing that, it will look like this. You can see my interfacing is on the shirt here and you can hopefully see that crease there. So it's just going to go over like that. Okay, so that's our interfacing in. The next thing we're going to do is... Um, press up our hem allowance and on this it's a quarter of an inch twice so quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch um, the way I like to do this I don't know if you'll be able to see but I have put a line of basting stitches at a quarter of an inch from the edge I like to do it this way because that way I get a nice even edge without having to measure it with my ruler every three seconds so then when I go to the ironing board I can just press right along that um, basting line and then we don't, we're, we're just going to press this edge right here. We don't have to go all the way to the end. We're going to finish this hem at a later point. Right now, we just want to really take care of this front edge. So press it under once, fold it over, press it under again. So that first edge has a basing edge, and then you just fold it right over on itself like that. Not stitching it down yet or anything. What we're going to do is open it back up, and you should see now you have two lines, two creases here, one here, one here. And you have a crease line here at the center front or the front edge. So we're going to fold this to the right side, to the yeah right side up. And this little three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch stays folded. We're going to press, fold this back on this um, front edge line, and you'll be able to see that this second crease line at your hem is going to match right up. So it looks like a straight line all the way across. And we're just going to stitch this front edge down from there, just right there. So it should look like this when it's finished, like that. And then we're just going to take our scissors and I have to cut this bit off because you don't really need it. That's just the top layer. And then the rest of this, I just cut at an angle, all right about like that. And then we're just going to turn it right side out. The next thing we're going to do on both sides, we are going to edge stitch right along this edge here. 
all the way down. Then we are going to move on to our back piece. We're going to set the um, front aside for a little bit. We are going to move to the back piece and you should on your back piece see you have a couple of little notches right here. So we're going to take care of that first. That's our pleat in the back. For that, we are going to turn our shirt right side out. Not at one of the notches, but sort of, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Between these notches, there's a little mark, a chalk mark. You can see it better on the wrong side, which isn't very helpful. <laughs> um, it's right here. And we're just gonna stitch this down from the top edge, and I think it says three centimeters. which is about an inch and an eighth again. So that is, I'm just gonna mark mine so I know how far down I'm sewing. I'm sewing to right here. Once we have that stitch, we're gonna open it out like this. And you'll see there should be a notch right there at your center back, which is where the, um, the top of that pleat. You can match that up with your stitching line like that. And then both of these edges, both edges of the pleat should have a little notch in them and they should match up with more or less with this notch at the top of your yoke. Actually it's the bottom of your yoke, but you know what I mean. So right there. Now we're going to press that from the right side and then just, um, stitch across that with like a basting stitch. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is make this little hanger loop. Um, the pattern piece looks like this. And it's pretty simple. You're just gonna fold it in half um, and then press both edges in towards the center just like when you make bias tape. Ah, open up, there we go. So both edges fold in and then you fold it in half and then you're just gonna stitch down this um, the edge with both folds. Now, because this is a tiny little piece of fabric and you're gonna wanna stitch as close to that edge as you can, a lot of times it gets jammed up in your machine. The way I fix that is, I know it sounds really scary because I had that debacle with my tissue paper before, but since we're just using a straight stitch, this really shouldn't be a problem. I literally just laid it on a piece of tissue and I um, increased my stitch uh, length to 3.0. And then when you're done, you can just pull that off. And this time you'll see the tissue really does come out. <laughs> it's what I was expecting to happen with my buttonholes. All right. So once we're done with that, and then we are going to sew this onto a shirt. It goes on the shirt back. And the way I'm going to do this is I don't really know if the stitching line is supposed to go in or out. I guess I'm going to sew mine in. But we're going to line this up with the edge of our pleat and the raw edge of our shirt so it's right there. And I am going to stitch just that side down. Okay, once we have that on there, you can see that's my little loopy thing. I am going to fold this over this way. I want this edge to be, I want the, to line this up the exact same way I did with the other side. And I'm gonna put, pin that down. And now I'm gonna go sew that edge down. I think it's easier to do the sides separately rather than trying to do them both at once. And once I get that done, then we're just gonna go give that a press. Okay, next up is our yoke. And let's grab those pieces here. You should have two of these, an inner and an outer. And you can see on here, there is um, a mark that should be, those notches should be match up with the either side of your pleat there. 
we're going to take one of these and put it right side down onto the back of our shirt, matching up our notches. And we're just going to stitch that down. And I didn't say this before, but keep in mind that on this pattern, the seam allowances are 3 eighths of an inch. It's um, one centimeter, which is about three eighths of an inch. So just be careful when you're um, doing any basing that you don't go past that because you don't want to have to pick out any basing if you don't need to. All right, so let's just sew this down and then we'll come back. Okay, so that's our yoke um, attached to the to the back. And I should have said before, this is not the way these instructions tell you to do it. I am going to do this with the burrito method, which I think is... Um, faster, easier, and neater. Um, they have you do it differently where you do a stitch in the ditch on the, um, put the other yoke on and do a stitch in the ditch later. But this is the um, burrito method and that's the one I'm going to use today. Okay, so I've put that on and I have pressed my seam allowances towards the yoke. And you can see here what I was talking about. I had some basing stitches and they're I think they're going to be okay, but they are really close to my uh, stitching line because I wasn't paying attention to that 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I think those are going to be okay. All right, so now we're going to attach our fronts and right side up. Fronts are going to go on this right side down. So once again, right sides together. And you're just going to put this one here. And this one here. And you're going to go ahead and sew those down. And again, you're going to press those seams towards the yoke. Alright, I said um, sew those fronts to the yoke. I should have said baste them because we're going to add another yoke now and you have to sew it again. So you should have just basted those, just FYI. Um, also, don't press those seams. We're going to leave those as is for now. So now we're going to, we still have this. This looks like this. Our shirt is right sides together. And now we're going to take the other yoke piece and place it right side down. Okay? So it looks like that. And now we're going to stitch these together. And definitely do like a regular stitch, not a basting stitch here. Okay, so now we have that um, sewn down. We are just going to take this all of this shirt. Actually, I think I'll turn it this way so you can see. You can see our shirt is still together, right sides together. We're just going to roll this up like this. Keep rolling, keep rolling until you get here. You see where your yoke stitches, your yoke uh, seam is right here? Yeah. We're going to stitch this. This is the yoke that we just applied. We're going to stitch these two together right along that seam line where you sewed it before. You shouldn't have any trouble keeping your shirt out of the way unless you're using like a super bulky fabric or something, but um, it's pretty easy on this one to keep that out of the way. All right, so this is what we have, what it looks like. It does, in fact, look kind of like a burrito. You can actually just pull this one right out of the um, neck hole. And it'll turn right side out pretty nicely. And is our enclosed yoke. Now just go give it a really good press. And then we're going to move on to our pockets, which are really simple inseam pockets. They are just like any other inseam pockets and we've done them many times. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. You have your notches here on the side. Um, 
finish the edge of your pockets <laughs> before you go any further. I always forget this, but finish the edge of your pockets. Um, and then you will see the pocket looks like this. There's, there are two notches. This one with the notch really close to it, that's the top. So that goes towards the top. That's going to match right here. And the other notch should match closer to the bottom. And you can just sew that down. And you're going to do that four times. Two on the front and two on the back. Okay, so those are our pockets sewn in. Um, just so you can see, I also surged the side seam with the pocket just just where the pocket is. Um, because when we sew the side seams together, we're going to want to search this, these pieces together. And you won't be able to search that, obviously. It also um, occurs to me now that we probably can, um, because this is, pocket is made such that it probably is not that hard to search this side seam and then around the pocket and down also. So that's up to you if you want to do that and search the pocket with your side seam. That's fine too. Okay, we're going to move on to the collar now. And for this one, I am using the um, oversized pointed collar from the... Um, collar expansion pack so the thing with any collar though is you want to make sure that these two points look exactly the same and that is where i feel like i have trouble so i don't know if you're going to be able to see it but on this piece i have marked my seam allowance all the way around i just used um an, a heat erase pen but you can use chalk or whatever you want um you can also see on this one that i did not put interfacing all the way down into that point because even if you sew down there it's not, it's going to be too bulky to turn then and as it turns out the stitch line is way up here so you don't need it anyways all right so um let's put these right sides together and go to your sewing machine and follow your stitching line all the way around okay so we have our collar and i have double checked to see that my stitching was looks pretty good on both points pretty happy with that um i forgot to say that the seam allowances on this collar are only a quarter of an inch um so just be aware of that now we're just going to trim down our corners i'm going to do it from this side so we can all see a little bit better this big hunk right here can just come right off and i'm going to cut it pretty close to that tip there and then i'm going to really cut close at an angle like that so that when I fold this back under I'm getting as little um, extra fabric under there as possible at the point yeah that looks good and then we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay, and then we're very carefully gonna turn that to the right side. And I may have gone too close on that one. Um, let's see what happens. I am gonna go to the ironing board and I'm gonna press these things open. Um, the way I do that is like this. I have one of these things. And I think it makes a world of difference when turning something like this. So you put this down here like that, press that open like that, and really get as far into that corner as you can. Then for this side, I'm just going to go for the long edge, we're going to Go this way. All right. Now we're just going to turn that right side out. Now on the regular collar, your regular point turner is going to be fine. Um, on this one, because it has a really long pointy collar, I'm not going to be able to get it all out with this. So what I'm going to do is take a straight pin and use it to sort of pick this 
edge out. Sorry, you guys. Daisy's going crazy. I don't know. Somebody's walking the dog out front or something. This might work better. And if you work at it a little bit, you can get the whole thing out. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put our collar bands on. And let's see. So we have two pieces, two collar bands. One should have our interfacing on it. This is the one that's going to be on the public side. And this one, the one without the interfacing on it, we're going to fold up our uh, seam allowance on the bottom. That's the wider edge. Um, we're going to fold that up just under 3 eighths of an inch and press it down. Now, we're, then we're going to take the one with the interfacing and we're going to pin it to the side of our collar that has the interfacing. So, interfacing is right here and then we're going to put this one right here. Now, I put a notch here at the center just to make it easier, uh, but there are a couple of other notches along the edge here. The most important thing is that there are these two notches. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but one is right here at this end, and one is right here at this end. That's where the edge of your collar should be. So it should be right at that notch. Now, the way she has you do this in the instructions is to pin this side and this side at the same time. Just sandwich your collar in between there at the same time. I prefer to just put this one on first and base it down and then put the other one on. I just think it's a little bit easier. It does take a little bit more time, but I tend to have fewer mistakes that way. So that's the way I'm going to do it this time. So for this basing portion, all I'm going to do is baste across this top edge, starting where the collar is under here from this notch across the top to this notch. Okay, now that we have that basted on there like that, we're going to put this side on. And again, just like we did with the collars, uh, the yeah, the collar points, it's really important to have these curves exactly the same on both sides. And the easiest way, I think, to do that is to just mark them with your chalk or um, erasable marker. And <clears throat> the seam allowances here are one quarter of an inch. It's most important right here at the curve. the way across it's fine you just want to keep your seam allowance even but if you mark it like this you're more likely to get both of those um, corners to look the same all right so now we're just going to go ahead and sew this all the way from this edge around the top around this curve down to this edge okay so there we have um, our neck band our collar band attached to our collar um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this but right here I actually ended up having to go over mine again, a little bit inside the stitching line on both sides uh, to even it up a little bit. It's a little tricky around those corners. The other thing is, I didn't say before, but when you get like right in here, you're gonna wanna shorten your stitch. My regular stitches, I think at 2.4, 2.5, I shorten it down to 1.8 just to go around the curve, and then you can straighten it back up. All right, so now we're going to clip into these curves. You only have a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so you don't need to, you, you shouldn't really need to have to um, trim it down too much, but you are gonna wanna clip these curves. Okay, so now our collar should look like this. That is the piece that's folded under. Also, I forgot to mention this, you're gonna wanna do a line of um, edge stitching right along the top of the collar band, starting right here. I need to clip these threads right here and going straight across to the other side, right here. Now, we're gonna attach our collar to our shirt. So, we're gonna lay our, our shirt down, sort of like this, right side up. This interface side is gonna lay on top of that. And we have some notches here to match, which is awesome. So we're just gonna match those right up. Now 
and this outside edge of your collar is going to match exactly up with the edge of your shirt and you're going to want to be sure you're pretty exact there right there so then let's put the rest of this in okay now we're just going to go to the machine and sew that on making sure you're not catching the other side of your collar band we're going to start right here and sew across and end right over here um i know you guys are probably sick of all the basing at this point but i am going to base mine i like to base it first then um pin up the front and double check that everything is sitting where it needs to be and um, then do a final stitch across the top. That's our collar base it on and the reason I like to base it on is because now I can pin the front completely shut and I can make sure that this stitching line is matching up straight across at the same time that, that, that my hem is matching up down here. And so this one looks pretty good. Sometimes it will be off a little bit and you're going to have to move with one of these collars either up or down like a quarter or an eighth of an inch. It's a lot easier to do that if you've just basted this on. Now, once we've got that done and we know it's looking good, we are going to go ahead and open this back up we're going to stitch this down with a regular stitch. Um, then we're going to clip these corners right here on both sides. And then you're going to fold this edge over, press this seam allowance up into the collar, fold this edge over, and then you can either hand stitch this down just like this, or you can pin it from the other side and do a stitch in the ditch, which is what I am probably going to do on this one just because it's faster. After that, we're going to move on to our sleeves. Okay, so for our sleeve placket, what they tell us to do is to just, this is the mark for the sleeve packet, but what they tell us is to cut this straight open, right at the center, like this. And then fold this under once, And then fold it under again to make like a double rolled hem up both sides. This is a little fiddly to me. So what I did was I folded it over once and my stitching here is a little wonky so you won't be able to see. I folded it over once and pressed it and then I stitched it down. Now when you go back to the sewing machine because it's already stitched down it's easier to fold that over. You don't really need to press this one. Just go to the machine, fold it over, and stitch right along your original stitching line on both sides. I, For one thing, I found it easier to start at this edge and stitch up into the point and then do the same thing on this side. Start at the bottom edge and stitch up into the point. Having this stitch the first time also means that it'll be more likely that you won't get any raw edges right here at this point. Um, the other thing I did was I used my handy dandy tissue paper and put it under here because this is a really narrow stitch line and you can see originally I tried it without that and it got stuck down into my sewing machine. So just doing it on top of the tissue paper and ripping it off when you're done seem to work really well for me. Okay, so that's our plackets. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, you can probably see here, like right here, you see some like raw edge. I don't know, I think that's the best I can do with that. It is sewn under mostly. I really don't like this method for a number of reasons, but also mostly because this does not look very, pro very professional here. I don't like the way that looks, but we can do a different placket a different day. Next thing we're gonna do is our pleats. And you should have two of them. You should have these two notches here. You're gonna match those two up and press that little fold towards the placket opening like that. Pin that in place. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this one. So it looks like that. 
And then you're gonna go to your um, sewing machine and just baste those down. Then we're going to put our sleeves on. And I think the easiest way to do this is just to lay your sleeve flat like this. This side, the one closest to the placket, is the back. So we are going to lay our shirt down like this. This is the back of my shirt. I'm going to match that up at that corner. We have two notches here. The notch in your shirt matches up with this first notch. The second notch should match up with this seam allowance, the seam where your yoke is. And then we'll come around here. The notch on the front of your um, Sorry, the notch at the center uh, of your sleeve will match up with the other side of your yoke. And then you have one more notch over here on the front that matches up with the notch on your shirt. And then you're just gonna not match your front edges together. like that and then just go through and put some more pins in if you need them all right once we get that pinned in we're just going to go to the sewing machine and sew that in and finish that edge any way you like okay those are our sleeves put in um, now we're going to do our side seams so we're just going to put it right sides together you're going to pin these together and you're going to stitch all the way down here all the way down here around here and then down here. And then you're going to want to come back up and stitch from the bottom of your pocket just along the same stitch line. You can even use the stitch line from your original pocket up to, the, you'll see a notch in the side of your seam here. You're gonna sew up to there and make sure you back tack because that's gonna keep your pocket, that's gonna make your pocket be functional. All right, next we are going to move on to our cuffs. And you will see here, let's talk about the cuff piece first. You should have two of these. Um, I pressed mine in half and put interfacing on one half. This again will be the public side. And again, it's going over the crease just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. The side that is not interfaced, I have pressed that edge under um, just a little over a quarter of an inch. So between a quarter and three eighths. Then we're gonna take our sleeve um, this cuff piece has one notch in it, which is right here, and that should match up with this seam in your shirt. So we're going to start there. And then just pin the rest of the cuff around. When you're done pinning this on, you should have about a little, the cuff should hang off the end of the shirt by about three eighths of an inch on both sides. So then you're just gonna sew that down. And once you have that sewn down, it'll look like this. You're gonna press that seam allowance into the cuff. And then we're going to fold our cuff to the outside. Right along our crease line. And we're just gonna pin it on right at the edges. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this, I hope you can. You're gonna have the piece that you're folding over should peek out a little bit past, that's the cuff that's attached to my shirt. This is the piece that we're folding under or over. 
should hang out a little bit. So when we do our stitch in the ditch, this will hang over the stitch line just a little bit. So when we go to sew this, we want this stitch line. We're going to sew, get this out of the way. We're going to sew right along this edge and we want to, our stitch line to meet up exactly with the side of our shirt. Okay, once we have that cuff sewn on and the edges sewn down, we're going to trim this corner. This is the bottom of the cuff. So we're gonna clip that off. We're also gonna clip this up here. You don't wanna get too close because you want enough for it to fold under, but this will pop out of the top if you don't clip it off. So clip that off, clip this off. Again, we're doing the same thing on both sides and on both sleeves. Then press this open if you can. If you can't, then just turn it right side out. And once it's turned right side out, you're going to pin along this. You give it a press, and then you're going to pin right along this seam line here, making sure you catch the underside as you go. So it will look like this. Hopefully you can see my pins where it's caught there. And then you're just going to stitch in the ditch all the way around the cuff. Okay, now we're going to go back to the very beginning. Remember when we um, did this little fold under for our hem. Now we're just going to finish it. So the entire way around, I've pressed my hem under a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch. And we're just going to sew that down as close to this folded edge as you can get. And when you do this, you're going to want to start at the edge of one button band. So you're going to start right here and go all the way around. Oh, where is it? <laughs> there we go. All the way around to the other button band. Okay. Then all we have left to do is our buttons. And because we had such a debacle with our uh, button placement last time, I'm just going to do it the way I have always done it before, which is I... Um, do a chalk line straight down the center of my button band. This one is one and an eighth inches wide. So I believe <clears throat> this is like just, it's between half, it's like four and a half eighths inches. But anyways, it's the middle. So, okay. Then I'm gonna take my pattern and I'm gonna measure here. From the seam line here to my first button is uh, two and three eighths inches. So from the seam line here, I'm gonna mark down two and three eighths inches. And two and my chalk. Three eighths looks like it's right about one, two, and three eighths is right here. So one buttonhole is going to start there. Each subsequent buttonhole is three and three eighths inches apart. So one, two, three, and three eighths. Uh, no, sorry, it's three and five eighths. The first was three, two and three eighths. After that, they are one, two, three, and five eighths. Okay. So from this buttonhole to the next one is three and five eighths. One, two, three, and five eighths is right here. So now I can see right exactly where I'm going to start each buttonhole. It's going to be right there. I'm going, um, vertically <laughs> three and five eighths so one two three and, and that's it don't forget you do have one um button right here in the center of your um collar band this one starts about a half an inch from this edge over here and this one is going to go horizontally so it goes this way and then you also have cut um buttons on your cuffs that you have to do. 
and that is it. You've made a shirt. All right, guys, that is our assembly line oversized shirt. I love this pattern. I really hope you guys um, pick it up and make one, at least one for yourselves. I think I'm gonna make another one of these, not right away, but pretty soon. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna make it like a duster or dress length version, like knee length. I realized when I was um, doing the editing that my camera in this video, in the tutorial part, goes out of focus a few times. I'm not really sure what that's about. I, all I can say is I've had a hard time figuring out exactly where to put my camera since I moved into this new space. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, I am gonna take a little time to rearrange some things in the sewing room here and hopefully we'll get something that actually works. All right, guys, I think that is it for me this week. As always, I thank you very much for stopping by and spending time with me and also for leaving me comments. I really appreciate your support all year long. For anybody who might be celebrating any kind of a holiday this coming week, I wish you the very best and happy sewing.